Hello and welcome to another episode of The Build. My name's John and this is Grand Exploration. But before I get into this video, I kind of want to learn a little something about y'all. I want to know if you're liking my content. More specifically, my series, The Build, where I gradually build up this 2015 WK2 Grand Cherokee that I have named the Granite Grand into what I consider a great overland vehicle. If you are liking those type of videos, please let me know, put them in the comments. If there's any, anything else you would wanna see more of or something you'd like to see less of, I'm gonna, I welcome the criticism. Just don't hurt me too bad, but put it in the comments. I really appreciate you guys. You have helped me out so much with this channel. Um, almost at 500 subscribers. I mean, to a lot of YouTubers, that may be a small number, but to me, that is a victory. That's more than I thought that this channel would ever go to. And now I'm excited to see where we can take it. So thank you guys for all your love and support. And now I'm gonna stop rambling and being mushy because I have a surprise for you guys. If you haven't noticed something different about the Granite Grand while I'm sitting here blabbering, something kind of in this area. Yes, that's right. Chief Products Lower Front Guard. Finally pulled the trigger on it. One of my favorites, I've had my eye on it for a long time. The reason I love it so much is because it's slim line, it, or a streamlined, slim looking. It stays tight to the Jeep's body. That's what I love about it. And I mean, let's face it, Chief Products is an awesome company. No, I'm not paid by them. No, they are not a sponsor. I just really like that company and the stuff they build. Um, if I didn't go with this lower front guard, I would have definitely gone with Six Monkeys Off-Road. Daniel at Six Monkeys Off-Road is building some incredible stuff for the WK2. Just amazing, high quality. I have some of his products on this Jeep now, which you can see in my walk around video on the channel, so check that out. Um, but without further ado, let's get into this video and install this sucker. All right, let's go. All right, the moment I've been waiting so long for, and hopefully y'all have too, the install of the front lower guard. Let's open this box. All right, box is open. Here is this beautiful work of art. Now the key today is one to see if I can fit this lower guard over the light bar. I think it's kind of a tight fit and I'm not married to the light bar anymore. As a matter of fact, it was about time for a new one, but if it doesn't fit behind this guard, we're just gonna take it out and leave it out. So let's get this underway. All right, installation process has begun. Step one, we're gonna remove this whole front bumper just to make things easier. I don't know if it's necessary, but I like to have as much space as I possibly can. And I don't wanna wish I did it later, you know, after the fact. So let's just get this front bumper gone. And in case you don't know how to do that, pull out your fender. There's also gonna be, I think it's a 10 millimeter socket right there. Go ahead and Get that guy out of there on both sides and then you just pull this whole thing apart be careful they are just plastic clips um, but they should come out no problem All right, so front bumper is off. Maybe we'll just stay like this, Mike. Yeah. Hit the roll like this, put the lower guard on. Yeah. Yeah. Be like, what kind of whip is that? <laughs> well, my next step now, which you probably won't have to do unless you've done the same thing I have, is remove this Six Monkeys uh, washer tank uh, protection. I bought that a while back before I was running any kind of lower guard or anything like that, um, just for a little extra protection. 
So we gotta take that off. And it's just bolted there and where else? Actually, just up front. So bolted there, there, and there. And she'll come right out. So I made the decision um, to just get rid of this light bar. Um, I don't know yet if it'll fit behind the guard or not, but I'm having a feeling I won't like the way it looks. Two, it's partly broken anyway and needs to be replaced. And three, losing that light bar will free me up one more space on my switch panel to run a winch. So, out with the light bar. The first step of the Chief Products lower guard install is to remove the bolts for the corner guards. I don't have corner guards. So, the next step would be to remove the M8 bolts from the subframe, which is that one, and that one. All right, next step is installing the corner mounter brackets on both sides. Cool. Okay, so we're taking this, um, this uh, 100 millimeter bolt with this spacer here and a lock washer. There she is. Boom. remember because i just forgot make sure you're only doing things hand tight right now keep it a little loosey-goosey because things are going to have to shift around and it should be looking like that and next is to install the chassis mounting bracket which is this guy and it's going to be mounted. So I gotta take my tow hooks out and mount them somewhere under here. We'll see in a second. All right, so I have my tow hook, my Rough Country tow hook taken off. Um, and it says for installing these, it's basically going to look like this. This is upside down, of course. But your tow hook's going to mount on that plate like that. Um, so for that, they say to grab, sorry for the noise, the uh, 25 mil bolt like this and use one of the O, labeled O, locking washers only thing is when I use this bolt to go through both the tow hook and this bracket I'm only getting about like that much thread left um, to tighten down the tow hook and I don't really feel comfortable having a tow hook holding on by that many threads so I'm not gonna use that one even though it's nice shiny and new I'm gonna go with the ones that 
I was using, which are a little bit longer. So I can more of a secure, secure hold on my tow hook. So I'm gonna use that with the locking washer. So now we should be looking like this. Boom. Those are mounted. They're a little tighter than they should be right now. I need to loosen them back up to finger tight. It's just so hard to reach under there. I kind of fully sent that uh, ratchet. So I'm gonna back those out a little bit so I can wiggle it like this one. And it should look like this on both sides. All right, so I have the brackets installed on both sides. Now, before I get any further, I'm gonna go ahead and take off all these old bolts to loosen up my Six Monkeys bath plate. Now, yeah, like I said, it's a Six Monkeys, it's not a Chief product, so I'm hoping that everything goes together good. I don't see why it shouldn't, but let's hope for the best. So let me get these undone and get this guy to hang down a little bit. Now it's time to get the main centerpiece mounted to the brackets on each side. For this, we're going to take two of the 25 mil bolts along with labeled P, which are the um, locking washers. And on each side of this, we're going to be going through that top slot there, which will... Uh, connect to that top slot there. All right, now we are preparing the center guard or the lower guard, the center piece. Um, we're gonna connect it to the sump plate down below. And like I said before, I don't have a chief product sump plate. I have a six monkeys sump plate. So I'm hoping everything goes smoothly. Uh, but what we do now is we take the 40 millimeter bolts, throw the uh, locking washer on top of those and run those into the bolt head protectors. And then we're going to fasten that up and connect it to the sump plate. Your chief products lower front guard should be installed over the sump plate. Almost forgot, um, along with that, you need to add some spacer washers um, that are gonna go behind this when you install it. Uh, for the light duty package, they say use two washers for the spacer, for the heavy duty, like they show in their diagram. And what I have here, um, they tell you to use three spacer washers for each bolt. So four bolts total, three on each. So I have the thread bolt or the bolt protectors all in finger tight. All right, so we have the bolt and the spacer behind it mounted just the top one there, just the top one there, finger tight. So she's still a little loose. That's how you want her. Starting to take shape. All right, so next we need the corner guards. This big guy right here. And here, let me put the phone in. This guy is gonna fit 
just like that using these again 25 mil with the locking washer those are going to go in here one and two then we're going to bolt the bottom but i haven't seen what bolt we use yet so i'll get to that in a second okay we're just about all bolted up i'm going to tighten these down get all these in it's the same on the other side now still got that one and the same one on the other side and there's something you gotta stay a little focused on because i wasn't well it's not all my fault my internet went down and chief products likes to send their instructions on the website not in paper so <laughs> i got no service so i was kind of winging it but with these guys these are not all made the same the ones here, the four across the bottom here, are a little bit smaller in the center for a smaller bolt. The ones on the side here, they're a little wider for a bigger bolt. So, just keep that in mind. Right, time for the last piece. 